My plant parents, they expect me to be low light. That's the reason why they bought me. They put me in their darkest corners, but they don't realize that if they just gave me bright and direct light, I would thrive. I want to step into the sun. I'm from South Africa. Fuck. Let's talk elephant ears. There are four main types of elephant ears. You have your colocaceous, your caladiums, your alocaceous, and your xanthosomas. This is the colocacea esculanta, also known as the tara plant. It's a staple food in African, Oceanic, and South Asian cultures because of its edible corms. These are caladiums discovered in the Amazon River Basin. Known for the colorful foliage, there are over 75 cultivars that are sold commercially. This one is a pink beauty. Check out that flower. Alocasias are a super popular houseplant, as we all know. 97 species are native to tropical and subtropical Asia and East Australia. This is my Alocasia odora. Okay, saving the best for last. This is a Xanthosoma sagittifolium. Definitely botch that. They're harvested in Central and South America for their tubers. They're found in swamps and along stream banks. And in Florida, they're super invasive, so we keep them in pots so we don't destroy the environment. Quick hacks for healthy plants, part six. If your plants look a bit unhealthy and need a pick-me-up, try using Epsom salt to water it. Epsom salt contains magnesium sulfate, which allows plants to better absorb nutrients, and it also aids in the creation of chlorophyll, which is vital for photosynthesis. I usually use two tablespoons of salt per gallon of water, and I do this process once a month. Enjoy! What's up, guys? I'm at Lowe's right now, and I'm going to show you guys the top plants that will improve the air quality in your home. Peace lilies. Snake plants. Photos. These beautiful dracinas. And English ivies. And if you have room in the house, I would get one of these. You need to be cleaning your house plants, and here's why. Dust on the plant blocks the sunlight and reduces the plant's ability to photosynthesize. If you see or feel dust, it's time to clean. Gently wipe your plant with a wet cloth. You can also use a duster. A clean plant is a healthy plant, and a healthy plant can fight off diseases and pests. Follow for more. If your plants are dying or wilting, don't give up just yet. Try this. Grab a cup or a bowl, add in one tablespoon of 3% peroxide, and mix it with one cup of water. Apply this directly to the soil of your dying plant and watch your plant come back to life. Do this once every three weeks. Hey y'all, quick succulent tip. If your plant baby is reaching out and looking a little leggy, they are wanting some more sun. Try moving them to a different window. Good luck and happy planting. Okay, so if you like plants, like I do, then I have a tip for you. Instead of using something like this to pot up your plants, Try something like this. This is my very own soil mix, and this is what it looks like when it's unmixed. You can go ahead and pause here if you want. I'll include all the ingredients that I use just for my standard soil mix. So you can see now this is super, super chunky. The reason why this is going to be better for most of your plants is because a lot of plants are susceptible to what we call root rot and that happens when the roots are sitting in waterlogged soil for too long. Giving them a chunky mix like this will provide a lot of drainage for the water and will also provide more nutrients than standard soil would. I'm going to use this new mix to repot this guy from here to here. Ta-da! If you found a bag of plants that look like this or this, you need to pay attention to a few things on the back, no matter how pretty that plant on the front looks. First things first, look at the hardiness zone. You need to figure out which zone you're in. Here's a map to figure that out. Next, look at how much light that plant needs. Full sun means it needs at least six hours of direct sunlight a day. Partial shade or sun needs three to six hours. If you don't pay attention to the info on the back, your plant may not thrive and may not even bloom. Here's how to give your plants a little humidity boost. In their natural habitats, plants receive so much more humidity than they do in our homes. So you can mimic that by giving them a little steam shower. All you have to do is make the room super steamy. If you notice your plant has brown edges on its leaves, it may be because of low humidity levels. I do this about once or twice a week and my plants love it. I learned this and so much more on the Candy app. Cinnamon espresso for my indoor plants. You'll need coffee, cinnamon, and rainwater. You can also use distilled water or club soda. Use one tablespoon of coffee and one tablespoon of cinnamon and give this a good mix. You can give this to your plants once a week because it's an organic fertilizer that's rich with potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. I'm telling you, your plants would love you so much. Thank you for watching and follow for more. It is time for our most requested plant of the week. Here's how to take care of your peace lily. 
Not only are these guys tolerant of low light, but they love it. So keep them away from windows and make sure you give them lots of water. I like to water when the top layer of soil dries out and because they love so much water, it's super important to have good drainage. Always make sure to chop off dead flowers and they're super dramatic. So if you wake up one day and your pea silly looks like this, don't worry, she's probably just thirsty. Should you trim the brown tips on your plant leaves? Personally, I do and here's how and why. Make sure to only trim the brown tissue, never cutting into the fresh green tissue. I do this because it's aesthetically pleasing and because it allows me to keep an eye out for new signs of damage. Hey guys, so a lot of people were asking me about how I take care of Freddie, my fiddly fig, so today I'm going to show you what I do. When I first got Freddie, I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't give him the proper things he needed so he showed no growth. After I did my research, I learned that I needed to mimic Freddie's natural habitat to get him to put out new growth, so that's what I did. I have a south facing window where he gets a butt ton of light. I shake him to mimic wind that he would get if he was outside and I do this like every other day while I scroll on my phone for a few minutes. And I water him in my shower and I thoroughly water him like hard to mimic like rain. And ever since I started doing those things, he put out this brand new leaf in my care and this is the next leaf is coming and there's even a leaf right there that's going to come out soon. So yeah, I would definitely recommend shaking your tree and watering it like rain. If you want a plant that's going to make people say wow when they walk into your home, I suggest the Bird of Paradise. They have these big beautiful leaves, they grow tall, and they're easy to care for. They like bright and direct light but can handle some direct sun, and I water mine whenever the top three inches of soil is dry. If you want to give a plant a second chance, here's what you do. The first thing you want to do is gently remove it from its old home. Then use your fingers to gently loosen up the soil. Shake off as much as you can to reveal the roots. The next thing you want to do is add some fresh soil to the mix. Then add two tablespoons of oats and one tablespoon of Epsom salt. Mix it up, grab a pot and put in half the mixture. Then place your plant in its new home and fill it up with the rest of the soil mixture. The oatmeal boosts the quality of the soil and the Epsom salt provides magnesium and prevents transplant shock. So if your plants are dying or you just want to get them to thrive again, definitely give this a go. You all keep asking me, how? How is your pothos so freaking huge? And I'm going to tell you. In nature, pothos love to climb. So if you want them to get big leaves and lots of vines, you have to allow them to climb like they do in nature. Pothos, when they get big, can even get fenestrations, kind of like a monstera. As you can see, they love to climb trees and latch on with aerial roots, and I'll show you what mine look like. Here you can see it's like a very thick vine, and these little guys are all the aerial roots that have actually grabbed onto this pole. Vines have been attached with just like that wire that's on your loaf of bread. <laughs> you want temporary attachments that hold the vine to the post once they grab on with their aerial roots you'll remove that temporary attachment and allow the plant to hold on on its own. That's it. When you go to repot a plant, you only want to go into a pot that's about one inch or two inches bigger than the previous one. Otherwise, the soil will stay too wet and that's an easy way to encourage root rot. Have you seen these little balls in your soil and you're like, oh my God, are those eggs? No, it's a fungus. Here's what it looks like in comparison to perlite. It just happens when the soil is a little too moist. It's not harmful, just scoop it out if it bothers you. Hey you guys, this is Mother Nature's niece and let me show you the natural way to get this hard water stain off your plants. No, your plants are not ashy and they do not eat lotion, I promise. So grab a lemon, cut it up like a little fruit ninja there. And y'all know what we do with the lemon that life gives us. Go ahead and squeeze them, yes, use what you got. Take some distilled water or purified water will work also and rub that solution all over your plant's leaves. If your plant has grooves in them, make sure you get in the grooves also. After it dries, they should look brand new. Happy growing. Small things you might be missing in your plant care routine. Turning your plants for maximal light and growth. Check under foliage for pests. Pests can be a little sneaky, so you have to look for them. While bottom watering is a great technique, make sure you give your plants a good top soak through from time to time to flush out any excess minerals and build up. Aerate your soil so roots can continue to grow properly and water can drain. Whether you like clay or decorative, make sure you have drainage holes. You don't want room. Today's plant tip, two ways to increase humidity for your house plants. First, find a tray or saucer that's wider than your plant and fill it with small pebbles. Then, fill the saucer with water just below the top of the rocks and place your plant on top. 
as the water evaporates it adds humidity to the air around your plant. Another option is a portable humidifier. I found this one on Amazon for less than $20. If you have a plant that's struggling, here's what I suggest you do. First, I'm gonna start by checking underneath the leaves. That's where a lot of pests like to hang out. I'm then gonna pull or cut away any dead or dying leaves. And I'm also gonna check out the roots to make sure there's not any root rot. Get rid of all the soil, and if you see anything mushy, cut it away. I work with house plants for a living. Naturally, my house is full of plants. People always ask me, what do you do when you go on vacation? I just got back from a two week trip, so let me show you what works, what doesn't work. The night before I left, I took all my plants outside, watered very deeply, like water, wait, let it soak in, then water again. Sure, there's no dry spots. See, this didn't actually get wet. You need this whole root ball to be completely wet. Because I watered so deeply, the majority of my plants were completely fine for two weeks. The only plant that didn't do well, my six foot birds of paradise. So lesson learned with my large plant, take an empty wine bottle, fill it with water and stick it upside down in the soil. So this big guy gets a little extra water while I'm gone. Plastic or terracotta, things to consider. This pothos plant is in terracotta. Clay is porous, promoting airflow, which is perfect for a plant like this that doesn't like soggy roots. This prayer plant loves moisture, which is in a plastic pot that retains moisture. Helps me to keep pace with water. Mm -hmm.